This question of Mr. Burgess. Thank you very much for being here. Mr. Scalise, you're next. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the committee. I appreciate allowing me to bring this amendment. I've got an amendment that repeals the individual mandate in the bill that requires American people to buy government-approved health care. I don't know of any case in the country's history where we have required people to buy a good or service as a condition of being a lawful resident of the country. And I would also share the same concerns with millions of Americans and legal scholars that there is no place in this United States Constitution that gives us, the Congress, the authority to mandate that American citizens have to purchase government-approved health care. In fact, I have a legal document here that I'd like to submit to the record. It was put on by Heritage Foundation that goes through a number of cases, including going back to 1937, that limit the power of Congress, especially under Article I, Section 8, the Commerce Clause, which a lot of people have used as the reason behind this mandate. And they lay out the limitations that Congress has in terms of the Commerce Clause. In addition, this would also kill the tax that would go along with the individual mandate, the tax that's estimated to bring in over $17 billion that would be thrown onto the backs of American people who didn't have government-approved health care, which also brings up another interesting point. It would eliminate the need for what CBO estimated to be a $10 billion requirement that the IRS go out and hire over 16,000 new auditors to go and implement and carry out this new tax. I don't think there are any Americans out there that would consider a jobs bill to be one where Congress creates another 16,000 IRS agents to go out and punish people for not buying government-approved health care. So the bill is very straightforward, the amendment, in terms of what it does. It just gets rid of that individual mandate that is in the bill, and that clearly would be challenged on constitutional grounds if, in fact, this bill were to pass, which I hope it doesn't. So that's the amendment. I would be happy to take any questions. Thank you very much. I appreciate your patience and your thoughtfulness. Any questions, Mr. Scalise? Question or just? Yeah, go ahead. Mr. Sessions. Mr. Scalise, we've heard about this, but I haven't gotten into it very much. I recall when we debated, argued about this some months ago, that it's a criminal – if you do not pay what you're supposed to, it's a criminal – against law. They can hold you criminally liable. Is that correct? That is correct. And, in fact, that's why if you look at the title of the Senate bill that's going to be up for a vote possibly tomorrow, it puts the IRS in charge of this. This was supposed to be a health care bill. I don't know of any IRS agents who went to medical school, but the IRS would be in charge of that, and the estimates are that over 16,000 new IRS agents would be hired to implement this provision, this new $17 billion tax on America. So we're going to go from what was an option to now federal criminal complaint that could be filed against you. It's a sad day, sir. I would agree with you. Thank you very much for being here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members.